Father, we come before your presence this morning. This is the day. This is the defining day. This is the specific day. This is the declared day. This is the day. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it in Jesus' name. And I pray today that our hearts are leaping with joy. We are praising our God. We thank you, Lord, that we can come into the house of worship. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And we came with expectation. We came with excitement. We came with enthusiasm. We came with exuberance. We came in the presence of God. We're fascinated. We're just absolutely overwhelmed by you today. And Lord, we just want your spirit to move on our hearts and our lives. Oh, Lord, I believe there's an amen in the house somewhere. Amen. I believe the Spirit of God wants to move on us today. Lord, help us to lay us aside. Help us today to lift up Jesus. Help us to praise you. Help us to worship you. Help us today to get you involved. If we'll just get more, more, more of you in us, it'll be far less of us, and we'll see our problems start to disappear. We'll start seeing our things that were overwhelming to us. We'll see them solved in Jesus' name. Lord, it's just the fact that we've got to come to you broken, messed up, spilled out. And Lord, only you can put us together and work in us and do what's needed to be done. So work in us today, Lord. I mean, mold us and shape us, fashion us and form us, press us and push us, do whatever it takes to get us where we need to be, that we can be the instruments of righteousness, that we can live for you and that we'll have the glow of heaven all about us and Jesus will be exalted in everything that we do, say and accomplish. Have your way in this meeting today. We didn't come to have a worship service. We've come to have a meeting. Amen. We're meeting with the Lord. And when we leave here, the meeting results is all gonna be good. Because your people are going to be blessed, be honored in our lives, and we love you, Lord, with an everlasting love in Jesus' name. And all God's servants said, Amen. Now give the Lord a praise, a thanksgiving to his glory today. Do you feel the world is broken? We do. Do you feel the shadows deeper? Did you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. And do you wish that you could see it all made new? We do. Is all creation groaning? a new creation coming it is. and is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst it is. is it good that we remind ourselves of this Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slain. Is he worthy? Is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy of this? He is. Does the Father truly love us? He does. Does the Spirit move on? Jesus, our Messiah, hold forever those He loves. He does. And does our God intend to dwell again with us? He does. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal? 
Sin stains are lost in its life-giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. Well, there's power, 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 power wonder-working power. It's in the blood. Wonder-working power, it's in the precious blood of the Lamb. Now would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, 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 wonder-working it's in the blood, in the blood of, the land. of the land. There is power, 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 wonder working power. It's in the precious blood of the land. Well, there's power, 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 power wonder working power. It's in the blood, in the blood of the land. Of the land. There is power, 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 power wonder working power. It's in the precious blood of the Lamb. Well, there's power, 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 wonder-working power. It's in the blood of the Lamb. Of the Lamb. There is power, 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 wonder-working power. It's in the precious blood of the Lamb. Somebody said. Long before the dawn, before the rooster has his say, the farmer and his farmer's wife begin another day. She will wash the dishes and he will milk the cows. And like every spring for 40 years, it's time to hitch the plow. Now he knows every pharaoh like the back of his hand Somehow they've made a living Living off the land Now it ain't nothing fancy And it don't look like much to some But these fields can feed a family Before the winters come Now for 39 harvest times The farmer's wife has prayed that the man she'd always loved Would go to church with her one day He's as stubborn as the mule That helps him work the summer fields She prays for grace, she prays for rain And the crops that they will yield Now no one knows what's going on Inside that old man's head one October Sunday morn, he got out of bed And he put on his coat and tie and he polished up his shoes The farmer joined the farmer's wife together on the pew Now that little congregation, they won't soon forget that day walked to the altar and he knelt down to pray and like the leaves on the trees the tears began to fall the seeds that she had planted had been growing after all 40 harvest times 40 crops that they had grown 40 years of Sundays she went to church alone But she won't see the autumn leaves The same way anymore It's the October harvest She's been waiting for Now if you have a little faith Before you sow That seed below 
See it grow. Sundays, she went to church alone, but she won't see the autumn leaves the same way anymore. It's the October harvest she's been waiting for. It's the October harvest. After we're continuing in our study in the book of Romans, which has been a very powerful study for our hearts and our lives. And today we're basically dealing with and concluding chapter 6 of the book of Romans and picking up with verse 20 down through verse 23. And uh, we have been coursing through these familiar verses that somewhat become familiar, but we become so familiar with them, we seem to lose the context of what those particular verses are saying to us. You know, like Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. You know, we know these scriptures, but we need to really analyze and take a closer look and see what God is trying to speak to our hearts and our lives through. This passage that we're going to be dealing with today is divided up into basically two sections today. Verses 20 and 21 today speak of those who were before Christ. In other words, when I say before Christ, that means before Christ came into your heart and your life and did that great work that he did. And this is what we see before we had Jesus in our lives. Let's face it, our lives were a wreck. We were we were just in a, a complete mess. Our lives were a shambles and we were sinful and we were going to hell. But then we find in Romans 6, and you pick up with 22 down through 23, is the aftermath or the after results of the now of who and what has happened in your life with the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Paul had been painting a contrast here. And I want you to pay close attention because what I'm sharing with you today is crucially important to our lives. But Paul is sharing here a contrast between what we once were and who we are now in Christ. You know, sometimes I think we delve back into the past too much. I think we go back to where we were and who we were as opposed to rejoicing in who we are now and what we're going to be. I think sometimes we live in the past and, and I'm not saying you're glorifying your sin, but I think too many times we, we spend too much time in looking back into something that you cannot do anything about, but praise God that you're past that and that now you are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. You know, when I was in the hospital here with Percy several weeks ago, I was so touched one evening. I had gone over to the room. They had found out some news about his health and many of the family were there, grandkids, kids and so forth. And uh, Percy and Judy was there. And you know, Percy, I just sat there on the foot of his bed and I listened to him and he preached one of the best messages I've ever heard on salvation. He declared to his family, he declared to everyone that was in that room, everybody that was in the sound of his voice about the importance of knowing Christ as your personal savior. He declared how God had brought him through what he had gone through, but it was the power of God that was in him. The fact that he had received Christ and knew him as his personal savior, that's what gave him strength. You know, I, I left that room that night. I was so touched by his testimony. I was so touched. Listen, I don't believe anybody in that room who didn't know Christ could walk out of that room and continue like they were. Because he spoke his, he spoke his life. He spoke the importance and he spoke about, and I know the life of Percy and Judy Gunner. I know what they've been through. They've shared their life with me. I know the trials that they've faced. I know the situations that they've encountered, but I know through it all, through everything that they've gone through and faced, it was the presence of God who was with them. And see, that started at a point and a place in time in their life where they cried out for the mercy of God because they were in the same condition that I was in, you are in, and every person is in today that does not know Christ, and that is a lost condition. 
But in that day, they received Christ as I received Christ and you've received Christ. And oh, what a difference he's made in our lives today that we can proclaim and declare, oh, look what the Lord has done for me. Look at the change that he has wrought. Look at the salvation he has provided. And even when you go through the valleys of the shadows of life, you still have a refuge. You still have a strength. You still have a God who will never leave you, who will never forsake you. Who is that present help? Who is that hope? And who's everything that you ever need in life? Folks, that's what the Lord will do in your life when you give your life to him and receive him as your personal savior. Amen. That's the power of our God. When we were born again, a miracle of regeneration occurred in our lives that brought an extraordinary change in our life. I cannot, in the King's English, actually describe today that transformation, that change. But I can tell you in my spirit, there's just a constant rejoicing, a celebration over what God has done. It's the fact today that I know in whom I have believed and am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know that I have reason to rejoice, even through the struggles and the dark nights and the mountain experiences and the valley experiences and everything that we go through. Man, I'm glad today that I know who my God is and I know that he'll never fail me from that standpoint. It is an extraordinary change. So God does not validate people today the way people validate people. People basically validate you based on what you can do for them. But I'm glad today we've got a God today that does not validate you based on a performance. I'm glad today he validates you today based on a relationship, that you know him as your personal savior. Every drop of blood that flowed from Calvary from his body had a purpose, and one of those drops had your name and my name on it. And I'm so glad today that blood has touched me. I'm so glad the blood of Jesus today has healed my soul. I'm so glad today I'm a child of the King. I'm so glad I got a better place to go. And I'm so glad that until I get there, I got a God that will never leave nor forsake me and who will walk with me and will bless me beyond measure. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Romans chapter 6. Let's stand for the reading of God's word, if you would please. If you can, if you can't, just stay like you are where you are. The word of God says, for when ye were the servants of sin, ye were, listen to this, this phrase. This just resonated in my soul this whole last week. When ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. That's a pretty strong, startling statement from Paul. What fruit hath ye then? In those things whereof ye are not, uh, now ashamed, for the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become the servants of God, ye have your fruit unto holiness. That word holiness, it references the sanctification process that God works in our lives. And he says, and the end, and the end everlasting life. And then the verse that we're all familiar with, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You may be seated. Give the Lord a shout of praise for his word today. <laughs> Two things I ask of God for you in your life today. As I was pondering this late in the hour last night, things that I was seeking for God to work in our lives and to do. First, to strengthen and to encourage believers here today with the great joy that we have in Christ. We do have a great joy. We have the Lord on our side, and that's reason to rejoice, isn't it? Amen. The Word of God says, let the redeemed of the Lord do what? Shut up and be quiet? No, say so. Amen. Declare it. Live it. Proclaim it in your life. And secondly, to awaken those that are dead in sin, to awaken to see the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ and the great thing that he can do in our lives that is called regeneration, salvation, and the process that he works. And I'm glad today that he still works in us and on us even beyond the process of salvation. Before and after features today some and are useful and sometimes it's even disturbing from that standpoint. Before and after picture shows us basically the extent of some significant change that happened in our lives. The word of God can show the extent of significant change today. Salvation will create a new person 
in life. I, I like it the way Paul and I probably use it every Sunday, every Wednesday, and every day. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man, but referring to that any person being in Christ, they're a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's what you got when you got the Lord Jesus Christ into your lives. And to think about these chains. So this whereas thing, this, this issue today, these changes that God makes, whereas I was blind, the blind man said, but now I see him. Yeah. I'm so glad today where I was blind, but now I can see. And then further, the scripture says, whereas you were servants of sin, you became obedient un, uh, from the heart. And so, oh, what a difference Christ will perform in our lives if we today will trust him. Today, we have the before and the after picture in many forms that we face in life. We see it in advertising. You see these folks coming on, trying to encourage you to get in their weight loss program. And they show these folks that, I mean, praise God. Um, well, you know what they are. They, uh, you know, um, they've had too many fried chicken legs or something. I don't know. But then they tell you, oh, you can lose it. And this was the size my pants was. I mean, it looked like a, it looked like a blimp. It looked like a, 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 a hot air balloon. And then they stretch it out. And then they stand there and they got the, you know, I don't know how they got that overnight. But they got abs and they got, you know, the muscles are dripping off of them and everything else. Yeah, right. It's amazing what, you know, you can do. But, um, and it's amazing how they can lie too, isn't it? But you know, you see, oh, this hose pipe you can buy. It's just the greatest thing in the world. You can take that little hose pipe and it just coils itself back up. Have you ever bought one of those things? Have you ever had one of them? They're the biggest message you've ever seen in your life. They leak, they don't hold up, you know, and I'm not giving bad advertising here, but you hear all this stuff about, you know, I, I'm, I'm always amazed and I'm always amazed when you're going through the checkout line at Walmart. They got all these gadgets and gadgets and stuff that you've seen on TV. TV, you know, it'll do this, it'll do that, it'll wake you up in the morning, it'll slap you, it'll make you a coffee, it'll, it'll dress you, it'll do everything for you, and come find out all it is is a pile of junk you bought, and all it's good for is to throw in the trash can. See, they show a lot of stuff today that tells you that this, this is going to change your life. This product is the best thing in the world. This advertising that we're doing, it will make such a change in your life. And you know we see the before and after picture. And you know what? They use that to suck you in to the convenience, to the effect that it wants to produce. Well, Paul in Romans 6 today is giving us a before and after snapshot of our lives. You know, you look at what Paul is showing us here. He's showing us before Christ, we were in the flesh and we were failing in the fall. But then we see when Christ comes into our lives, we see the effect of the faith that we have in him and the transformation and the change that happens. So Paul has centered our hearts today on the most important thing you can center your heart on, and that's the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel is more than just getting information, ladies and gentlemen. We want information, information, and we live in a, in a, in a society and a generation today that's technologically absorbing and desiring more of information. Now listen, folks, I can't handle what I've already got, much less getting more. I'm, try, I'm trying to refine and hone in on what I've already got. I don't need more information right now. You know what I'm saying? The fact is I got to learn to do with the information I've already got. But the, the gospel is not about information today. The gospel is more than just a historical fact today. The death of Jesus Christ on the cross has a greater impact than anything that you could ever encounter in your life today. It's just not a fact. By the way, the gospel is power. And it's the power of God in your life to transform you, but just not to change you and to make you a child of God, but it's the power of God that works in you every day using you and blessing you and getting you through what you face and using you as a testimony unto the grace and the goodness and the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the power of God and the more the power of God that you absorb into your spirit from the word of God. I'm telling you the stronger a Christian you will be, a greater person you'll be for the cause of Christ, a greater testimony, a greater light, a greater person to reflect the goodness of our God and what he's done in your life. We need folks that will shine for Jesus today and not be ashamed of this gospel that has transformed us. Amen. <laughs> According to Paul, this, this power is tangible power. That, that change that brings about a 
it, it brings something that's discernible today. You can see it. You can see it in someone's life. You can see a change, a transformation. Oh, listen, it's nothing like the presence of God, is it? The New Testament presents a Christianity that creates change today. We, we used to be lost, but now we are found. We used to be a sinner. Oh, listen to this, but now you're a saint. When the world has told you you're nothing, you're never going to amount to anything. Maybe some of you grew up with that mentality. You were pressed down. You were pushed down. You were kicked aside. You were even thrown under the bus. But man, I'm glad I've got a rescuer on my side that doesn't leave me like you found me. I'm glad, thank God, he'll change your life. He'll change everything about you today and make you a saint of God. We used to live like hell, but thank God now we can go and focus on heaven because we got a better and a greater place to go. Amen. It's a before and after picture here. So what category are you in today? What category does your life fit in? Where are you today in your life today? Just because you're sitting in a church doesn't make you a Christian. Just because you're sitting in the church doesn't make you a sanctified, Holy Ghost filled uh, servant of God that's serving the Lord. The fact is, you've got to make some choices about your life. You've got to discern where is your life at in Christ today? Are you living in the before? Well, I remember back. Let me tell you what, you might as well forget about remembering back because you can't go back and change that. You can't go back today and alter that. You can't go back and live that. The fact is, the past is in the past. You need to put it in park and leave it there, amen. amen. But God's got a better life for you ahead. And you need to look forward today. You've got to, as Paul said, you've got to press, press. You've got to push towards that mark, that prize, that high calling that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So today we celebrate. Hey, we're here to celebrate something today. And we celebrate the grace that is given us, that was given to us at the cross by the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. So I've got a theme for you. As I've been giving you a theme through every Sunday morning message, I've got another one for you today. This one is a good one too. And I hope you grab it when you see it. Well, I think you've already seen it. So has it grabbed you yet? Grace is worth celebrating. Amen. Grace is worth... Hey folks, you cannot live apart from God's grace. You need God's grace in your life every day. Let me give you a few quick points here. I'll try to make this as quick and as painful as I can. I mean painless. <laughs> Don't glorify a graceless past. Verse 20, Paul said, Look back at your pre-Christian days that was filled with a poisonous, destructive freedom. And I tried to point that out to you in that first verse there. Be careful how you look back. We use the phraseology, the good old days. Most of them are bad old days. Amen. Amen. Brother, listen, there's nothing back in Egypt to go back to. There's nothing in your past that you want to go back to because that is marked with condemnation, marked with sin, marked with destruction, marked with poison, and marked with, with everything wrong that was in your life. That's why I don't understand how Christians who have been saved by the power of God, how can you go back to that garbage pail and eat out of it again when you got freed from it? You don't need to go back. Well, you don't know what I'm up against. It's no excuse to go back to what you came out of. Now listen, folks have done it, and probably most of us sitting in this room someplace in our walk with God has done that. But praise God, I'm glad I didn't keep my head in the garbage pail. Amen, there's a better way. Thank God the prodigal came home. Thank God you remembered when you're down in that pig pen of life and you were groping and trying to get through, you remembered you had a heavenly father that loved you, that redeemed you, and cared for you, and provided for you. And thank God you can go back home. And if you're in that condition today, his arms are open and he says, come on back. I'm waiting for you, amen, praise God. You think about the fact today you were a slave to sin. And you were free in regards to righteousness because you didn't have it. Back then, you were free from, three quick things here for you. You were free from the love of God. I would hate to think that I'm free from that. I, I thrive off of the love of God. 
Amen. Second, you were free from the power of God. There was no power in your life. There was nothing. All you had is what you had, and that was it. And you didn't have nothing. <laughs> Third, any influence in your life, it came from God. So you, you thought you were free, but actually you were in bondage. You were in slavery. You were, con you were condemned. But when you're free in regards to righteousness today, you are unconcerned about God's word. See? When, you, when you're free from today the fact of the righteousness of God and you're living in sin and you're not serving God and you today don't know him as your Savior, you, you are basically unconcerned about God's word because you don't want it. Because that's the element of change in your life. Secondly, you are unprovoked by his law or his word. It doesn't stir you. It doesn't move on you. I pray today God will start shaking people's hearts and lives. I pray today that God will grab people up and shake the sin and the hell and everything else that has invaded their life and they're living for today. And I pray God will bring people to a reckoning. And I believe today the greatest need in America today, I'm sick of politics. I'm sick of politicians. We need the Prince of Peace who's already brought peace and we'll receive him and live for him. Amen. And you're unimpressed by God's judgment. People living like there is no judgment. Let me tell you what. Judgment day is coming. And the great judge of heaven is going to deliver it. Hallelujah. You mark my word. All these events that are taking place, we think, well, do we need Democrats? Do we need Republicans? We don't need none of them. What we need is the King of kings and the Lord of lords to show up. And bless God, one day we shall see him. And one day we will rejoice in his presence. And one day we'll be with him forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not looking for a Dem or a Republican. I haven't found one yet that has any sense. Amen. Take it for what it's worth. So what are you? I'm neither. I'm a child of God. Thank God I'm not going to heaven based on what Republican or Democratic status I'm in. I'm going to heaven based on the fact that I'm a born-again child of God delivered by the blood of Jesus. My name is written, written in heaven, and I've got reason to celebrate today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> See, people can't change unless God does the changing. Freedom in regards to righteousness is a deluded freedom. It is deluded because you think you're free to do whatever you want to do. But the fact is, in actuality, you are a slave to sin. You don't have a license to make your own decisions today for your own desires, and that's the only reason that people want that today. You know, when you're free from righteousness... You have no love for the things of God and for holiness. You have no sense of God's authority over you. He's still sovereign. And if you want to know what that means, I'll give it to you in a capsule. He is still Lord and he is still in control. Amen. You only wanted God's support. But you realize something today and you better realize it. You're not entitled to it. You don't have no rights. Rights. That's my rights. You don't have any. You don't have any. And any rights that you have came through the process of the righteousness of Christ. Amen. Amen. So today, that's, that's not free. The fact is today people are shackled in sin. Question. How did your life before Christ, what did it really amount to? What was it? Well, I had plenty. Don't ever use that around me. I was on top of the mountain before I got saved. Oh, Really? The mountain was on top of you. Amen. If you're gauging your walk in life based on materialism and success and prominence and power and prestige, all that stuff is going to fade away. It won't last. But what will last is a relationship with the God of heaven, the God of the universe, the God of redemption, the God of glorification, the God of salvation, the God that owns everything, and he owns you and I today too, amen. Praise God. You know, uh, Jesus said, you will know the tree by its fruits. So when I ask you that question, what is your life 
What did your life before Christ amount to? I'm going to tell you, your fruits will reveal exactly where you were. The American public has forgotten how to be ashamed. I'm going to go a little step further on you. I believe Christian America, the church, has forgotten how to be ashamed. Amen. When people, I saw it, the clips, I haven't been seeing much news and I haven't been on the internet and stuff. I've just been smack busy and I, had, I haven't had time for things like that. But I did catch some snippets and I see that people and I saw the signs of people before the Supreme Court about an issue that was before the Supreme Court in regards to supporting abortion. Stating that they have rights and all these other things. You know what America, you know what America has forgotten? We today have forgotten how to be ashamed of our sin. Listen, if we will study history, if you will study the word of God, you'll find that nations and people were destroyed because they lost the fact of being ashamed. They lost the reality of where we were. You know, when churches fly, the gay flag in front of their churches, outside of their churches today, those churches have forgotten how to be ashamed. I don't hate no one. Every person, I don't care who you are, what color you are, or anything else about you. Every person needs to be saved. There's no hate issue in this. It's the fact today that, that this type of homosexuality is an abomination unto the Lord. God will not bless it. God has not ordained that. And you are not today born that way. You chose that way. Amen. It's a sad state of affairs. The America today, they have never really understood how to be ashamed. But the church, we know we should be with the condition of our world. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, God said, I will hear the cry. I will heal the land. Woo, the blessing will flow again. Don't base the blessings of America today on what the economy is doing or anything else or what we do internationally. Listen, folks, don't base it on politics. Don't base it on the economy. Don't base it on today anything materially speaking. You better base it on what God's word says today. If there's going to be a blessing on America, it's got to come by God through the church the day that once again we can return to the basic principles of God's word and start living holy, sanctified, spirit-filled lives that will glorify God. Folks, the church is not doing it. Don't get quiet on me. Your clapping got kind of watered down on that one. We become at ease in Zion. We become complacent in our sin. We come, become satisfied with where we are. And we use that Word that you, those words that you, that cliche, you know I can't stand. You know what it is. Don't even say it. Oh my God. He's just like a kid. You tell him not to do something, he'll do it. Amen. I'm telling you, friends, we've forgotten how to be ashamed today. Our nation has become a sin dominated society today that has forgotten how to be ashamed. And today the church has no power. They can't even blow out a match. We won't live as testimony. We won't serve God because we're scared we'll offend somebody. Thank you for your testimony in that summit today, or this last night, Dorothy. Your testimony shone through. I've been with some of you. Sometimes y'all are amazing. I just sit there and keep my mouth shut. And the nurse comes in the room when you're getting ready to have surgery. I should, you know, and you're sitting there and you say, so where do you go to church? <laughs> oh, boy. Sick them. Man, what a blessing. What a blessing. Listen, when you come to the cross, something happens. Amen. Something happens. Something changes. You're not the same person anymore. You got a different walk. You got a different character. You got a, everything about you. Your countenance has changed. It's Jesus all over you, amen. 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 And this is what we today should desire. This is where our conversion comes in. This, listen, when, when you have been to the cross, you begin seeing today 
you begin seeing the evils of sin and you don't want to participate and practice that any longer. You see your past sinful life and the shame that it is in. You saw what you were. You look in the rear view mirror. You look to where you have been. But in Christ, hallelujah, we don't have to look in the rear view mirror anymore. We look forward to the great things that God has in store for us. If you're a believer today, listen, in the, in this, in the perfect life of Jesus today, and his death on the cross and what he has accomplished for you and I today, you have been saved by God's grace alone, in faith alone, in Christ alone, and you today don't have to look back in the rear view mirror any longer because now you're looking unto Jesus who is the author and the finisher of your faith. Amen. Amen. You've now been bestowed. And listen, upon that, upon that bestowing process today you now have listen to what i'm going to tell you today think about this a moment now in christ and you need to if you live for jesus you will grasp and understand what i'm telling you today you now have the riches of christ you now have your guilt has been lifted off of you you're not walking around i don't know what i'm going to do you lift your step stand up straight look to the heavens and proclaim how good our god is amen <laughs> Woo! What do you do? Now you live in freedom. Freedom. You can live in freedom. Second point. The next two are real short. You say it? Uh-huh. Let me refuel. Celebrate a grace-filled future. Verse 22, Paul said two words. We, we won this here a few weeks ago. But now. But now means... There's a change. Amen. A change is when we've been set free from sin and now we're being sanctified. The sanctification. He uses the term holiness in the scripture text, which is a form of sanctification. God changing you. Working in you, working on you, your desires. You, you don't want that mess of the world no longer. You don't want to go out and drink and snort and dope and Chase women and men and all this other stupid stuff that people do. You don't have no desire for that. And that's just, that's just the fringe of it. There's a lot of deeper sins in our lives, friends. We, we don't free ourselves. We don't just snap out of it. No. Amen. We're not, and I hear people, I, I'm going to get my act together. You haven't gotten your act together yet, so don't even start. Because you can't do it. Only Christ can change you. And man, when he works in you and works on you and works through you today, it's a change that's for sure today. You know what? We were passive, but God is active. Amen. We were changed and God unchained us. Whoo. And the key that God used, the key that God used, come on church, the key that God used was the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ that he thanked God, he put the key in the lock and he grabbed you and he snatched you out of that mess. He redeemed your soul and he's made you free and you're a child of God. You're not ashamed of Jesus, amen. Thank God for the key. The cross is the key. The direction God's taking you today is holiness and sanctification, and it ends with eternal life with him in heaven. Whew, what a day that shall be. You change. You change. The things you used to love, you don't love any longer. The things that you used to do, you don't do any longer. In Christ now, your life has meaning. See, your life before that, it's gone. It's, your life prior to Christ, it's dead. It's gone. It's just as if you'd never lived it. Sanctification, holiness, you begin getting the victory over sin, addictions, and chains that had you, your hang ups, and all these people got hang ups, and all this other mess. Listen, all that stuff is lifted off of you now. You remember the day that you asked Christ into your life? Whew, just like there was a lifting, just like everything was just taken off of you. And you know what? That's exactly what he did. And he's become your God, your Savior today. Grace, God's grace places you in an unbreakable, unchangeable, unshakable, unsearchable, unmovable rock that is higher than I, and that rock is the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God.
third point, you can live, you can live a grace-filled life now. Verse 23 is familiar. Wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know, when, when, you, when, you, uh, when you get from Satan's sin and the chains that he had you entangled and snared with today, when you were all wrapped up in that mess, you were in the wages of sin. But God gives a gift. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. What is that? That's God's forgiveness. And what is that gift? It's eternal life with him forevermore. Well, we're not there yet. We sure aren't. But thank God someday we shall be. But until then, I'm not giving up. I'm not throwing in the towel. I'm not turning back. I'm not compromising. I'm going to stay true to the course that God has called you and I to be on. And that's to serve our God. Nothing is worse. Nothing is worse than you being treated like you deserve to be treated in hell. Because that's what we all deserved. There's no advocate in hell. There is no hope in hell. For the wages of sin is death. But friend, thank God, in Christ we are forgiven. We are made righteous and we have received his love. Now if you've received this, and if you've got it, and if you're saved today, then you need to do what with it? Start living it. Amen. Start living it today, not acting it out. You can't act it out. You've got to live it. Because if there's a genuine change, transformation, a redemption in your life, it's going to change you. And it's a process that God continues to work in your life from salvation to the point that you stand before him. You get in Christ by turning from your sins and turning to the Savior. And I hope you've come that way. If you haven't, you can today. Do you need a victory in your life today? Do you need God's conquering power to overtake some area of your living today? Do you have a burden that's heavy and you just don't know what to do with it? Do you have sins in your life that's robbing you, manipulating you, and just eating at the very core of your existence today? There is an answer. And his name is Jesus. And he bids us to come unto him. And I'm glad when he bids us to come, he will receive us. And I pray wherever the situation is in your life today, if you're lost, come to Christ and get saved. If you're saved and you've got burdens, you need victories, and you're struggling, come on, bring it to him, for he can turn it around. Folks, the greatest need in every person's life today is the need of the presence of Jesus to prevail. Let him prevail in your life today. Would you stand to your feet? Thank you, Father, for the season of your word. Thank you for the power of your blood. Thank you for your name that is above every name. And these altars are open. These altars are open right now. Friend, do you know Christ? Preacher, I don't know him as my Savior. I'm lost. I'm going to hell, and I'm sick and tired of living this way. I'm sick and tired of making excuses. I'm sick and tired of every day going through the pains of life. And today is going to be my day because I'm going to give my heart to Jesus. Preacher, pray for me. I'm not saved, and I need to be saved. I'm lost, and I need Christ. Pray for me. Slip your hand up right now. Anybody? 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 All right, Christians, where are you at today in your walk? How close are you to Christ? Could I ask you today, those of you that need improvements in your life and your spiritual walk today, would you raise your hand? Could you walk closer to Jesus? Could you be stronger for Christ? Could you today? Have you many of you today said, preach? I got things in my life I need victory over. I got some things in my life that I'm dealing with. I got some problems that I need answers for. Pray for me, preacher. Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. Father, right now, as the music starts, a song today that we need to hear about this love of this Savior. Help us to come out of those pews. And Lord, help us to land right here at these altars. Help us to cry out to God in our every need today and lay our burdens before the throne. Would you come right now?